Remember, folks, I'm just a Muppet in a chair. Don't take me seriously. What's going on, everybody? Hi. How are we doing? Uh, we are getting back into an idiot abroad. This is the last episode. Yay. No more wonders, but this episode is where it called Carl Comes Home. So he uh -huh. talks to Ricky and Steve in person about his experiences. Well, Ricky has the biggest smile on the thumbnail yeah. right now, so he's loving it. Yeah. He's absolutely loving it. Um, this is probably the most memorable episode for me, because I remember some of the crazy yeah. stuff that Carl says. Yeah, I bet he says some funny um, stuff in here. And yeah, Ricky's like dying laughing throughout most of it. Yeah. Because, like he says in the Ooh. intro, he's like, I want him to hate it for my own amusement. Yeah. You know, because Ricky's kind of, Ricky's a jerk sometimes. Yeah, he was like, this is the most expensive He's such a lovable jerk, though. prank I've ever pulled. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, you ready to get into it? I'm ready. All right. We'll see you in there, Boomerites. Like, subscribe, do whatever you want. I wish someone sent me all Here around we go. the world for a prank. I know, right? I'd love to get sent around the world for a prank. It sounds a lot of fun. But here we go. What's this in The Guardian? Guardian guy, pick of the day. All right. Oh, pick of the day. This, this will be a good review, then. The conceit of this ball achingly dull series. <laughs> have, have you ever, has your balls ever ached from watching a program? Have you ever watched a program and gone, don't know if I'm enjoying this, but my balls are aching? I, I ate it. This is the dullest thing. Oh, hang on. It doesn't, I, I don't know what that means. His balls are aching because the series is that dull. If, if TV that he doesn't like makes his balls ache, why is it, why don't he turn it off quicker? <laughs> he must get a twinge and go, oh. <laughs> That was a comment about the show or something. Yeah, so yeah. it was like a review in a uh, newspaper, the Guardian newspaper over there. I like how he just, like, tried to dissect that sentence yeah. there. Like, you can see this. He was like, what does that mean about the the achy balls? Yeah. Like, the show actually... He was right, you got a little twinge. Yeah. Hello, and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad, uh, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant... Hello. ...and the eponymous hero... Carl Pilkington. All right. I suppose this is a, a roundup. In a way. We've watched the series, we've laughed, we've cried, we've got angry. I, I got bored as well. <laughs> 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 but what wow. about Carl? Because, you know, it's quite an adventure. Well, you can see it for miles. It goes on for miles over the hills and everything. But so does the M6. It's almost like a, you know, like a diamond in a turd. Actually, before we continue with this, this, of all the episodes of this I've seen, because we're, we've been watching this on YouTube. Yeah. Up, somebody uploading this on YouTube. But of all the uploads, this one is by far the best quality. Yeah, so it the is. the places well, look very, yeah. yeah. You don't see that in the brochure, do you? Shitty old nappy whizzing through the air. I tend to leave that out. The stuff that these eyes have seen, right? They'll remember it. Well, it's funny you should say about your eyes because you know, I've been consulting your diary here. So, so the other reason I'm finding it hard to relax is that there always seems to be something going on, something to take in. I think I've blinked less since I've been here, as I don't want to miss anything. So my eyes have been open longer than normal. Maybe that's why my eyes are so tired. When I was there, I was using the eyes more. When I'm here, sometimes I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> why? Are you with me? No. What do you mean? Life here can be quite boring for your eyes. Sometimes driving. Mm. I get to some place and I go, how did I get here? And it's because you're not really looking where you're going. <laughs> While driving? No, it's only the little odd things in life that makes your eyes sort of go, oh. Well, there's been a lot of things, hasn't there? Food. You've seen some pretty grotesque things. Like Food. that fella there who was your driver in China. Oh, man. This is incredible. Look at this lot. Thank you. She's all right. What's he having over there? Good Jesus. Does he know it's not all in one piece, that noodle? <laughs> Are we in a race? I didn't realise... Mm. I mean, what... I read somewhere then. Why is he in a hurry? Like... I'm in his van. Should I be getting a move on? Mean, it means that you're enjoying the food. Really? So, like, when they drink, 
Or when they have stupid stuff, they like slurp it, and it means that you like it. If you're quiet, it means you don't like the food. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's true, but I did remember hearing that somewhere. Yeah, somebody find that out for us, please. It means we give me a lift down. The suction on that. It's just one minute it's there. It's like opening an airplane window. It just all Great. sucks out. Well, how we are. That's it, he's eating it. I've hardly touched this. What's he got now? What is that? I think it's chicken's feet. Yes. You don't pick a, a food by what sort of feet it's got. Just just have chicken if he wants chicken. We're paying, he could have had anything he wanted. And he's spitting it out now, he's just spitting its nails out by the looks of things. No thanks, you're all right. <laughs> I not mind it, he's been munching like Minto's in the van. He's never offered me one of them. It gets the chicken feet. Suddenly, he's keen for me to have one. He's just spitting stuff out. He's chewing on it. He's spitting on it. I, I can't eat this. <laughs> oh, see that, then? Stop looking. No, stop looking, yeah. Man. He'll have to clean it up. <sighs> You're not having pudding, are you? See, I'm with you on that. that there's, there's no reason to eat like that. I don't think you'll ever hear of a Chinese man who starved to death. Because there's no reason to. Street food out there. I thought street food meant, you know, you have chefs on the street cooking food. They don't, they don't mean that. It's street food. Whatever's crawling about, they grab and eat. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Are they dead? They eat everything. Honest to God, that market. Yeah. I thought it was a myth all that before I went. They eat everything. I thought they don't eat weird stuff like that because there's no need. Yeah, there's they have a lot of people to feed too. You don't have to get to that level yet. I think even in Lost. And that program, they didn't, they didn't even get to insects and that, did they? They were stuck on an island there with coconuts. At no point do you see one going off to eat a squid or a, a lizard or a, a scorpion. It never happened. Yet there, they just... I'll have that. Not a problem. Just, just shoving them in the face. I mean, I don't think they do harm a celebrity to get me out of there in, in China. Because they'd go, it's the problem, they're lovely, or you can eat Buffy, yeah? <laughs> Not a problem for them. <laughs> <laughs> That thing on the bus when they're all going. <laughs> yeah, I hated that. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was gross. It's disgusting. Doesn't matter where you're from. I don't know what you have to do over there to offend someone. Just farting, burping, spitting. That driver, he farted three times one morning. <laughs> <laughs> no one thought I went. Oh, I had a laugh about it. You dirty sod. Nothing. Just carried on. But that's the way they are. In a way, oh, are I they right? I don't like that. Is that the way we should live? I don't know. Yeah. Noise has been a big thing on the whole trip. Um, well, look, here you're complaining about all the noise in Brazil. Yeah, it's just that was hilarious, right? Yeah. They've been overworked with constant, you know, drums, singing, whistles, chanting, dogs, yeah. helicopters. Gays. <laughs> One massage for your ego. Gays wouldn't you know, be on that list, but the one I met here just wouldn't shut up. Oh, Lord. Now, I went to Brazil during carnival time. I had a whale of a time. I really enjoyed myself. Great. It's lively, it's vibrant, loads going on, people are in good spirits, colour, energy. You, nothing but whinging. No, because I don't like, you know, the carnival and the block parties, it's all parties for me. I've never liked them anyway. I've never really had them. I've never had a birthday party. Um, I just, when I see them, you know, like that advert for Iceland, Iceland supermarket. Yeah. You see Kerry Katona and Christopher Biggins have a little volivant. Hold on, everybody. Let's all do the Congo. Okay. <laughs> Dances. Come on, stuck. Oh, it's stuck on a shoe. It's stuck on a shoe. Oh. oh man. I like congas. Oh, I don't look at that and go, that looks like a good, good, good night. No. But you're meant to, aren't you? It's meant to give you a good feeling. Iceland supermarket, look at the fun you can have with the food. I don't know where that party would be happening. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't look at it and go, I'd love to be there. And it was the same in Brazil. I don't like <laughs> false fun. That's what it is, false fun. Yeah. I don't like it when people organise stuff. Come round Thursday. Come round and have a drink and a chat. I don't know how I feel on Thursday. 
But you'd never get anything done if you didn't have a bit of planning. No, because you just, um, you go with it. It's good. Because you could go up to somebody I and feel go, you, Carl. Fancy coming around tonight, I've got some beers in, have a, have a chat. Oh, I wish you'd have said, I'm going to a party. No, no you're not, no, you're not. What, what? Because there isn't such thing as planning. I'm right. just in the mood, I'm walking okay. down the street. OK. I see you. Yeah. Fancy coming around tonight? No. <laughs> Why not? So I need more notice than that, really. Why? I, I left a chicken out. It's, it's, it goes off okay. tomorrow. And I go along. All right, Steve, are you coming around tonight? He's having chicken with me. Oh. <laughs> well, no, but I didn't know that because we hadn't arranged that. Yeah, you hadn't so arranged I've got it. something going on, Rick. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. I can't eat a whole chicken. Do you want a chicken? OK. And there you go, you see. So my night is better than yours. I'm eating your chicken. <laughs> I'm having a free night out here because there was no planning going on and I'm getting a free night of chicken. What? Oh, no, I I like it. I get Wednesday it, Carl. Before, you <laughs> went... What day is it now? What day was today? Tuesday. <laughs> So, Tuesday, we're all walking down the street. I always okay. get emails from people going, right. are you coming out next week? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. I don't like it. Is this you? What? Is that you? Are you coming around next Thursday? And I'm like, well, how, how, why would I know? Yeah. You're definitely all see how I feel that day type of person. Yeah, well, when he's saying, like, you know, I was actually talking about this today with you a little bit. Like, yeah. when things are... Uh, not planned, they're more spontaneous and free. They're yeah. much more enjoyable. In my opinion. But there's it's not... type A and type B people. Right, it's, I'm, I'm that way. When it's more spontaneous and free, I, I like it so much better. If it's rigidly planned, where like, you know, at 10 o'clock, we're going to do this activity. At 10.30, we're going to do that, this activity. Mm. At 11, we're going to do this activity. I'm just but like... But I will give it to you. You're like not late for things. Like if you have to be somewhere at 10... You'll oh, I'm on time. Yeah, yeah. I'm old school there. when it comes to that. Yeah. To that, yeah. I really like that about you. If so, yeah. If somebody says you know everybody's got to be there at nine o'clock, I show up at like eight forty-five. Yeah. And That's good. everybody else shows up at ten thirty. That is a good thing to have. Don't lose that. Yeah. Uh, ninety and uh, ninety percent of success, in, in my experience, ninety percent of success in life is just showing up. Yeah. So. Word of advice from your king. I had okay? a boss that told me, like, uh, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. So, yeah, some bosses are And that was my first like job. That. So I was like, oh, shit. So then every other job, I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to Not a lot of early. bosses are like that anymore. Yeah. At least He's here. He's a good boss, too. Yeah. Hello. I'm Mr. Ashik. Ashik. Nice to meet you, Carlitos. How are you doing? All right, didn't wave back, so that's... They don't know what that means, or they hate me already. I don't, I don't know. You reminded me of Bill Oddy. Just looking at him, thinking, I haven't seen the goodies for ages. What? What? What's that? And then the other barber looked like Jim Morrison. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Hang on a minute. Oh, I forgot about these people. <laughs> I won't be socialising. different, I yeah. I don't do that. I've always said you only need seven mates to get you through life. That's it. That's why, you know, I've mentioned Snow White with the midgets. She had them all covered in seven. Same thing again with friends. I don't want... You met a lot of interesting characters. Tell us about your favourites. Who are the ones that stick in the mind? What about Celso in Brazil? Tall and thin and young and handsome, the boy from me, Panima, goes walking in. When he passes, each one he passes goes, oh. I thought he was all right, Salsa. How do I look? You know, he's, he's a different, different sort of mate. What was your first thought when he walked out looking like that? Mm. Oh, Jesus, what was that? It's just weird. It's like you've had Wurzel Gummidge sort of change the head. Change the heads. It's a little bit freaky. Why are you referring to Wurzel Gummidge? Why do you make no effort to try and speak to people in terms they might understand? What's the chances of him, fell in Brazil, knowing who Wurzel Gummidge is? There's people watching this who won't remember who Wurzel Gummidge is. He just seemed very sort of well, well into the arts. <laughs> and it's, it's his mates as well. Marcelo. 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 Nice to meet you. Hi, Carl. Welcome to Rio. You're happy. I have never. You're happy. Never. <laughs> I 
forgot about that. You're a happy guy. No, but that dude, I, I forget what he, they said his name was, but he seemed cool. I thought he was nice. Yeah. yeah. And he was very uh, welcoming of having Carl and his, stay with him. Yeah, in his yeah. house. A gay man, so gay. It was just that voice, that sort of over the top. Nice enough, but I can't see us getting on long term. No. Do you know what? It's a good job I wasn't born gay because I don't know what I'd do. Why not? If you're gay, you'll be loving it, won't you? I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think I'm suited to it. Why? Just the, the lifestyle. Well, what do you I mean, mean the parties lifestyle? and stuff? Because the lifestyle, the way they, they walk about over there showing off, being quiet. You be okay, you, you wake like up party, Carl. gay tomorrow. What's the first thing you do? Do you get a boyfriend or do you play the field? I think you play the field. Yeah, you're gonna are you gonna talk the same? Yeah, maybe in time. I suppose things rub off. If I'm knocking about with John Inman's of the world, I'm probably gonna start maybe the, a little sort of uh, give me something to say. Uh, oh hello, I haven't seen you for ages. Right, so it'd be a bit different. Maybe the oh hello. Right. Okay. I haven't seen you for ages. Okay. Maybe little things like that, and people would suddenly go. You met Carl recently, sounds different. Or so you go, you go home, you go home, you go, go, your dad goes, all right, so how's it going? Have you been doing any DIY recently? Oh, hello, Dad. I haven't been there for a bit. Mm. Mm. Well, what are you talking about that for, Carl? How's Suzanne? Uh, I'm, I'm not with her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is pointless because it's not the life I would choose. OK, but you've woken up gay. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it then. I just go, oh, I feel a bit happier today, don't know why. No, but then you start going, oh, you go down, you buy a game see. magazine, you're flicking through, you're looking at more cock than you've ever seen before in your life and you're loving it. You look down, something's happened. What do you do next? <laughs> I just wouldn't look at that magazine again. No, you're loving it. You go, oh, I can't believe I haven't seen this magazine before. Yeah, but I've seen knobs before. Have you? Yeah. Where? You see knobs all the time. Where? In gyms and that. And don't say you don't look, because you do when you're in a gym. Because it's there. What and is? If you don't look, if you're going like that, that's, that's more of a worry. If you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. <laughs> you should be That I remember that quote from that. That's... <clears throat> it's an epic Carl Pilkington quote. If you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. I don't know if you have to be happy looking at it in the face, but... I get, like, looking at it. It's a weird way to put it, but I, I understand what he's saying, but it's like, that made it seem like, you know, he's very interested yeah. in the so. Like, <laughs> I'm comparing it to, like, when old ladies change at the gym. You yeah. don't want to look at their titties, but you're, like, curious. You're like, oh, she's 80. What do they look like? Yeah. It was like, I remember a Ricky Gervais, the cartoon thing, episode, yeah. and... Uh, Ricky was talking about like you try not to look, mm -hmm. so you try so you do something and usually you end up because there's nothing really to do in the changing room other than like start whistling, so you start whistling and he's like, <laughs> I'm just whistling so I'm not looking at your cock. <laughs> how could I be? I'm concentrating on whistling. <laughs> I don't know how to whistle, so what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Start dancing. Yeah, there you go. Uh. What and is? Don't look. If you're going like that, that's that's more of a worry. If you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. <laughs> you should be comfortable with it. Just, just there that's you go. A good rule of thumb. <laughs> you're just dying. So, like you have always been a big fan of what society would generally term freaks. You know, one of your your favourite movies is The Elephant Man, which is why we were very excited when we sent you to see The Elephant Baba. Yeah, this was a little strange. Oh, yeah, I can see him, yeah, I can see him. Shoes off. Money down there. Oh. It wasn't as shocking as I thought it would have been. I think the weird thing is, with Elephant Baba, is it's different from Elephant Man. Because with Elephant Man, there was a build-up. He's walking about with a sack on his head. You know, what is under there? I mean, the first thing I always used to worry about, where, where, where he got that hat from, that fitting. <laughs> it's a normal cap he had on, Elephant Man. <laughs> Who was that made for? But then he had the sack on top as well, and a little hole, and it, I, I remember watching it as a kid thinking, can I see anything in the hole? And then he takes it off and he's like, oh, God, that's well weird. Now, with Elephant Baba, mm. it wasn't as weird. Do you know the Elephant Man? The weirdest bit of it is when he's walking around with that head, but with a suit on. Yeah. Because it doesn't match. 
No. But in India, because he sat there... If you went to a tailor front... and they say, have you got anything to go with this? They'd go, not really. Yeah. Whereas with the fella in India... It sort of goes with it. It goes with it. So it wasn't as shocking. Sure. Yeah. Now, there's the one arm babber who fell around his arm in the air for 12 years. Well, that's ridiculous. From yeah. a distance, I thought it looks friendly. It's like he's going like that. Like, oh, here's, here's Carl and the camera crew. I sit down, um, two fellas sat next to him, worshipping him. Yeah. They really? loved him. Yeah. yeah. You know, I asked all the normal questions. What are you playing at? Uh, why are you doing it? <laughs> you think, like, because he's been hold held it up so long, though, that, like, maybe there's been, like, some thing that's happened in his arm that's, like, locked it that way? I think it has, yeah. You know? But blood I was thinking blood, about that when I first watched it. Blood supply and stuff isn't going no. there anymore, and he's eventually going to lose his but arm. But it's, like, everything, like, I don't know, what's the term, like, calcified in his arm, so it just, like, stays like that? I, I don't know. He's eventually going to lose his hand or his arm. Do you think so? Is definitely gonna lose I mean, he's definitely, you can't fucking use it, obviously. Yeah, but, like, I, I don't, you, there's, like, something with, like, your blood supply. He's not going to be able to... Yeah. I don't know. It's an interesting question. I'm surprised it's been that long. But you can tell, like, there's no muscle. Like, the muscle, yeah. it's how skinny it is. Like... In, straight in with what you're playing at. <laughs> I asked all the normal questions, what you're playing at. Right. Oh, I agree, like, though. I agree. What are you playing at? Apparently, there's other babbers with, like, two arms, one, arm, one foot in the air. Really? It's mental. It's proper mental. But are they standing up? Or are they... <laughs> I was happy looking the knob in the face. It's what he was doing to it. Well, he was just showing you his trick, his party trick. What was that? But that probably would get him to the final that? of Britain's Got Talent. Yeah, the man to hold would be a huge fan of that, wouldn't she? I, uh Caught round a stick. I mean, I'll never Cuts. forget it. You can't with the names. The names go with them. It's like old-fashioned names, how they say that if you're a baker, you'd be known as Mr Baker. That's how names caught on. Yeah. So the fact it's got Elephant Baba and one arm Baba, you don't go, uh, who's that one again? I can't quite picture him. I don't believe they are called Elephant Baba and One-Armed Baba. They are called that. When I went around that camp and I was saying to people, One-Armed Baba knocking about, they were going, yeah, he's about three tents down. Everyone knew him. It was like a council estate. <laughs> you have nicknames. John the Screwabout, where's Tattoo Stan? <laughs> it's all the same thing, all these little nicknames. Yeah. Now, if I said where... I don't know his real name, but if he was called, I don't know, Neil or whatever, I mean, Neil about, they'd be going, Neil, who's, who's John's Neil? What's, what, what's, what does he do in the camp? And you go, he's got head like elephant. <laughs> Elephant Baba, three, three down. <laughs> so it's convenient. <laughs> I mean, he's kind of not wrong. No, he's not wrong. There's certain things I've learned. Go Tell on. us what have you learned? I learned that babies in China, a lot of them are square heads. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, okay, now I want to look it up. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, Carl. Right, go on. <laughs> Is this... Why? Can we look at this clip? <laughs> he really didn't like China. Oh, my God. Has he got a square head? Have a look. I can't tell. That was a cute baby. Yeah. But why do they have square heads? We're probably heads? making them sick of all our baby fever right now. The main answer... Sorry, guys. ...seem to be... We're excited. ...so they don't he roll out like the cop. Baby. <laughs> no, no. What did you say? I asked some questions and the main answer seemed to be so they don't roll out the cot. No, <laughs> no way. How do they make sure their baby gets a square head? They, they somehow they stick a book to the back of its head when it's born. When you're born, you're you, your head's soft. Yeah, that's it? right, yeah. Did your mum strap What's... a dinner plate to your head when you were a kid? Wow. Yeah, what, what? a ladle. <laughs> but I didn't get all the ins and outs, and this is what I'm saying. But why does that... That doesn't stop them rolling out the cot. If you've got a square head, it's not like they couldn't roll out. Baby's heads... Remember, your head is quite big as a baby. Right. <laughs> the, body's, the body's sort of like that, and its head, it's trying to roll, and it can't, because it's like that. Is that wrong? And it's attractive, apparently. What do you mean? Do it, do it again, again. Do, it again. Do, it, do it again. The baby's in the oh cot, like that. <laughs> and it would want to sort of... If so it try had a round head, it so, could just go like that. Yeah, so now do it with a scrounge. Uh, how, how is it stopping it? I don't understand. So do because it with... it's kind of going... You can't roll. <laughs> what shape is a wheel? Round. <laughs> Some people think you are a character that we write and direct. If we'd created a character as brilliant as this, do you think we'd have flogged it to Sky? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Some people think, think that. They think that Carl is, like... Everything's been written for him by like Ricky and Steve. Yeah. And he just s says it. No, I think <laughs> he's just a weird guy. <clears throat> no, I th I think it's him. Yeah. There's no way you could play a character for that. Like. 
I mean, there all. is, but I just don't think he is. I think that's just who he is as a person. Yeah. He's just a naturally yeah. funny, miserable person. Yeah. But no, there are some people out there, like, and I've had people put it in comments whenever I've done a Carl Pilkington reaction. Hey, I don't know why you find this is funny, because this is all an act. I, I mean, he might, like, try to really, like, come up with stuff when he's, like, doing these interviews. But that's still him. He might be like, all right, I gotta come up with some good stuff, like, while I'm doing this. But it's still funny. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, it's generally him. I, I feel like know. I come up with my best material when I'm just, like, we're goofing around, and I yeah. don't think about it too much. Yeah. You think I? You think I come? Another up reason why I think stuff. things that are spontaneous and free are better. Yeah. It brings the it brings uh, the better part part of you out. Yeah. So. But yeah, that is There's a theory of most fish, people. Scripted guy. I think there's fish in here that I've read about that are so see through that they're invisible. So I don't even think they know they exist. Because other fish don't go up to it and like mate and stuff. I don't know how it works, but they just—it's like they're not there to us or to them. So they might as well not be there. It's a really weird. I don't know all the facts. If you're invisible, you'd eventually get ignored a lot, and you'd go, "Well, there's no point acknowledging anyone because no one can see me." Don't think that's how it works. Of course it is. Think if you were invisible and I walk past you, I'm going to ignore you because I can't see you. You can't communicate, because I'd go, who was that? And eventually, you just go, I can't be bothered communicating. So you're just there, floating about, eating. So that's probably why they carry on, because they just eat, they've got nothing else to do. I read it, oh. and I think they're in here, but you're not going to see them, so I can't prove it. <laughs> what is an invisible fish? There's people out there who said I'm an actor called Graham. Yeah. I wish I was. I wish I was. Well, change your name to Graham and become an actor. No, because then they go, oh, we knew that. So the reason you're you not out. changing your name to Graham and becoming an actor is that you don't want to give idiots the benefit of the doubt. Well, no, it's also that thing of remembering that you've changed your name. It's like <laughs> I told you, didn't I, when I was a kid and I changed my name to Brett. Everyone in the family went along with it and I kept forgetting. They kept <laughs> shouting me and I was ignoring them. So I thought, this isn't working. <laughs> All right, mate. How are you getting on, man? Uh. Well, I've had better holidays. Um... <laughs> it's not a holiday. I have to keep reminding you, it's not a holiday, my friend. You are making a travel program for the television. I can never enjoy Can't anything. Can it? Oh, I know. Get out of the Dead Sea, put some clothes on, and do some fucking work. Oh, fucking shit. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. You're spending the night in a cave, Carl, tonight. What for? It's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is what you said you wanted, actually, on that trip. But, it, it, on that trip, yes. Yeah, he said he wanted to be in a cave and I had look some at sort the... of new pudding that I've never had before. Carrots with sort of milk and oh, sugar God. on it. I enjoyed it. I don't know if I'll find it in London. I don't want to watch you eating carrots on the telly. In HD. Even in HD. Well, I reckon I've had about an hour's kit. I am knackered, and I don't know how to get that across to them at home, that I'm pissed off. Oh. This is for my amusement. And if you're having a bad time, bumping on the down on the camel with your, your, your testicles being battered, that's good entertainment. This uh, is what I'm giving back. This is what I'm giving back to society. You are my gift to the rest of the world. <laughs> so mean. It's so mean, but like Yeah. Uh it's it, it he is he's not wrong, it is entertaining. But, uh, yeah, there was a, a bunch of times during the trips I felt bad for Carl. Yeah. But, okay. uh, I, and I was surprised, remember the Mexico episode? Mm -hmm. When he was there and he was complaining about everything. And then everything. He said he and then at it. the end he was like, wow, I really like this place. <laughs> yeah. Which was, uh, pretty wild. Now, that's like the other thing as well, that, um, people think that, you know, because I call you a little round-headed chimp-like buffoon, Moron, mank, twonk. I could go on. Some people, they mistake that for bullying. Mm. What would you say about people that, say, that me and Steve bully you? If, if they think I am being bullied, what, what are they doing? When have they come to me help? Where's Esther Ranson? Why hasn't she been on the phone? Leave him alone. Nothing's happened. Everyone's saying that. I've seen that everywhere. Carl's being bullied. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm nearly 40. Don't worry about me. <laughs> and two, well, if you're worried about it, do something. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> He's I calling them out. Delivered to me. Yeah. And because you say, Carl Pilkington's got like a fucking orange, people think they can do it. I got some lamps delivered in a box. Somebody along the way, I don't know who, either the bloke who packed them, the courier, or I don't know how many people involved in packing lamps and getting them to me, but somebody wrote on the box, head like a fucking orange. <laughs> now that shouldn't happen. <laughs> of course, there were a number of instances where we had planned stuff that you were completely unaware of. In fact, most of the trip, you had very little idea where you were going to go and what was going to happen. I think a highlight for both Ricky and I was when we gave you some very important training in the event that you Amazing. were captured oh, during I mean, the terrorist that, Again, movie. that went better than I ever imagined. I wonder if that was real. This, I wonder if it was real. Yeah, I think you're out of order. What is going through your head when those guys grabbed you? You did not know they were going to attack you and grab you and drag you in the back of a van. It all went black. Um, I'd be scared to death. I heard a lot of shouting going on. I would literally have parted that. Although, if I saw those clothes, like they had t-shirts and then the headdress things. No, I wouldn't and have. things, I would have been like, this ain't, this, ain't, this can't be real. It would have been so embarrassing. I would have like had a heart attack, probably peed myself. Like, yeah. I know. But I'm saying like Terrifying. when he first got grabbed, like... Where is it? Like, look, he's right here. Why? Why did they wear that? I don't... Because it looks like there's T-shirt... Like, they all have the same T-shirt on. It's like, what is... Who, the gain has an outfit. <laughs> they have a uniform. Yeah, but it looks like a T-shirt you get out of, like, organized crime. You get out of, like, a restaurant. That's not going to strike fear in people. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, You're I'm just, not a lady, but there's this four is why I put the thing grabbing that, me and throwing me in a trunk and yeah. my pants. This is why I put that intro to me. Don't take me seriously. Because I'm I just talking shit, and I don't care what comes out of my mouth. They put my hands behind my back. They put one of those tie things on. It was cutting into my hand. I'm thinking, is this for the program or what? Because this is proper hurting. I'd make up stuff and be like, I'm rich. I can get you money. It's not, it's not a nice thing. I've never experienced Did you? Before. They often say in those moments where you think maybe your life's going to come to an end that your whole life flashes before your eyes. Is that what happened? No, because I, I had said to you, I, I, nothing, had I had a bag over my head. I couldn't see a thing. They often say in those moments where you think maybe your life's going to come to an end that your whole life flashes before your eyes. Is that what happened? No, because I, I said to you, I, I, nothing, I had a bag over my head. I couldn't see a thing. Talk to me! Hang on a minute, I'm to Are you talk English? To you English? Yes, talk to me! Who are you? I love it when you go, who are you? When the adrenaline's kicking in, you can hardly breathe and you do a posh voice. <laughs> who are you? No. <laughs> because I'm terrifying that, not knowing what's going on. It's uh, what is up. the number of him? It's in my mobile. What mobile? What is the number of him? I don't oh, know. I, I, will, I, I don't even know my mum and dad's number. I thought maybe this yeah, is I don't part know if this of is the real. setup. I don't know. But my body didn't know because it was going through the same thing as Terry Waite would have gone through or whoever else had been tied to a radiator. Did you learn anything from that, though? That was important training to make you able to cope if such a th terrible thing did occur to you. If you go to places that you're in danger of being kidnapped, you're meant to have a code word so that when the people who've nicked you right. call up the London office, yeah. Yeah. they go, we've got Ricky, Stephen, Carl here. Right. And the London office go, yeah, yeah. Give us your code word. Well, at the time, mm. it was Congress tart. Congress tart. How are you going to slip that into a conversation? No, you don't <laughs> slip it in. They've got a bag over your head, gun to your head or whatever. Tell them you've been kidnapped and you go, Congress tart. And they go, bloody hell, he's been kidnapped. Before you know it, the 18's coming in. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, ring, ring. Hello, Carl, mate. How's it going? Congress tar. What? Congress tar. Riff, okay. who's on the phone, mate? Uh, it's, uh, it's Carl. He said Congress tar, so he's definitely been kidnapped. <laughs> Who are they? What do they want? Right. Who am I talking to now? Because they're... Them. Not... Ask them. What do you want? He's asking what you want. Well, there's no one here to do that <laughs> bit of role-playing, so maybe you should tell me what they're saying. They said, um, they just said they, they want to use me as bargaining power. But what do they oh, want? What do they want? We'll see if we can make... But what do you actually want? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what would they want? Is it money? <laughs> Give them money, money. 
Okay, mate. Million, uh, two, five million pounds. Too much. I'm not spending that sort of cash. I've worked hard no, for this. you don't do that. I, I'm not spending that <laughs> cash. You see, this is what worries me. I'm not spending this five million to get you back, th That's Prinzi. what's worrying no. Because that's what would have happened. Can't we negotiate? Put, the, put them on. Yeah, here's Ricky. Right, you've got to play him as well, then. Hello? Hello. Who's that? Never mind who it is. Where's me five million? Can't afford five million at the moment. We're going to kill this kid if um, you don't kid, give us the five million. Are you, how can We're you getting him sick of him. Why, why? What's he doing? <laughs> He's just shouting Congress talk. <laughs> <laughs> give him the... <laughs> you all right? That killed you pretty bad. <laughs> What's our safe word? What's our safe word? Yeah. I don't know, Nebraska? Nebraska? Yeah. Nebraska. Nebraska. That's like a that's a hot name. For a girl. What do you mean? Like I wanna be Nebraska. Well your alter ego you wanna tell them what your alter ego is? I don't think it's a hot name. I do. I came up with it when I was drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be st with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Thanks to me. You love that name. I do. You I'm, did. Not I'm not telling him what the okay. name is. Thank you. Money. Give us the money. My alter ego. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have got him to call you, actually. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> okay, let's have a break. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, God. It's not really a dance, is it? It's like a little bit of a no. shuffle, really. It's just that, not really, uh, not using, not even adding, not even adding that sort of thing to it. Just a bit more with the face, <laughs> even. Look, even the dogs that sort of are old like, man what shuffle are you, doing? Is, you know, when old men are sort of a bit pissed up and the pants have fallen down a bit. That, that pissed up walk. <laughs> but, you know, it killed a bit of time. There was nothing else to watch. And I was tempted to sort of add, sort of join the line and then do that and see if they copy it and then that would be me giving them something. And then is that interfering? Maybe it wouldn't look frightening by the time, you know, if another tribe came in and they all stood over there looking like Lionel Blair. <laughs> You know, they're just going to go, right, let's get them. We can handle these. <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> oh, you love that. I did. I'm so jealous of you being in the Peruvian jungle. Didn't you have a whale of a time? Yeah. Um, fucking hell. No, you did not have no, a good time. No, you did time. not have a good time. When I go home, people watching it will sort of go, eh, but, you know, I've seen all this. Rain maze and... Bear grill sucking on elephant shit and all that. It's hard. Mr. To pause let is gonna pause again. Bad. I think of all the environments that I would, I would be in. I think the environment I would have the worst time is a jungle. Oh, I do too. It's just can't like you can't go very far in any direction without obstacles in your way. I'm allergic hot. to grass. <laughs> yeah. And trees and pollen and fruit. So yeah, I would die. But and you're I, so far from a hospital. I would imagine, like, of the... I think the big three would be, like, jungle, desert, and, like, a just a place that where it was constantly snowing all the time. It mm. was to try to struggle to keep warm. Like, those would be the three that I think would be, like, the worst. Yeah. You know? I don't like being cold either. Yeah. I agree. We're flying to Bulgaria to yeah, check on I've the... I've got the local builders on it. Right. Okay. In right. Bulgaria? Yeah. The plate spinning. Right. Antiques on the go. I'm buying What's scratch antiques? cards. You're buying scratch I'd cards. I buy a load of scratch How cards. many? Five thousand scratch cards. Right. I'd have some kids doing that. I'd say, right, you can have a fiver. Um, You're giving you it to. I haven't got time. I'm giving this, it them to do. This is the worst idea I've ever heard. How that my my, my million's gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's no, it hasn't. I mean, I've just. It hasn't. If you've got money, you make money. That's a fact. Where is Bulgaria? It's somewhere <laughs> I know Bulgaria is good for property. I've seen right. a lot of property programs. Do you That's mean what Belgravia? I do. I just watch... No, no, no. There's a lot of play... things that you can do with property, antiques, 
I'm what buying else? classic cars and doing a what. <laughs> so you're doubling your money on a classic car in a year? I've, yeah, but I've made stuff, I've made inventions. What have you done? I do the Dragon's Den. Like you say, the clip will my idea. Like, you have your cup there, but look at that saucer. Every time I have a cup... Have a little bit of tea. I'm talking to you. I've got to go like that. I've got to look exactly where I'm putting it again. Right. The clipper will mat is stuck on. It's, it's attached to it at all times. That's ridiculous. I'm to you. How's it going? And if what? I want, I don't have to put it down there. I can put it down there. I'm not limited as to the surface that I can put it on. It's attached. It's washerproof. Dishwasherproof. It's an idea. I oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. So am I. <sighs> Are you uh, saying the plate and the cup are attached? Yeah, by like a clip. Most of the world is grim. Louis Armstrong did that What a Wonderful World song. I don't know what he's going on about. If Louis had seen what I'd seen, he wouldn't have brought that out. Well, Carl, you talked a lot before you went on the trip about how probably your happiest holiday time was when you were younger. Where were you used to go? Wales. Wales. Port Maddock. Right. Year after year after year. It was brilliant. And why was it so great? It's everything you want. It's a good, like, you know, it was a good holiday park. Right. Weather was good. I had loads of mates there. There was always kids knocking about who I got on with. Arcade, beach. It was Hell's Angels down one end. Mm. Um, and I remember watching them thinking, I want to be one of them. I want to be a Hell's Angel. Because they looked hard, all the leather on and that. And uh, I don't know, you see, this is, again, this might not be true, but my mum told me it might have just been to put me off. She said, to be a Hell's Angel, you've got to shit in your pants. <laughs> I love your mum giving you a So shit in your pants and keep them on for a week. I love his mum. So, uh <laughs> Yeah, my dad said me Auntie Nora could have joined then. But, uh... <laughs> I forgot so, he said that, What yeah. you're saying is that you have nothing but happy memories of your glory days I loved it. back in Wales. And, you know, you were whinging when we were sending you on these trips. You were like, oh, I had a great time back in Wales, blah, blah, blah. Well, we sent you back to Wales. Let's have a look how you got on. So this is Wales. Oh, we're getting a preview of Wales, baby. Aw. Yeah. That's a pretty drive. Yes, it is. Wow. I can't wait to drive there. I think the... Uh, of the people from the United Kingdom who follow this channel, I think the Welsh are the nicest. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe the Scots. The Scots and the Welsh seem to be the nicest. I think you, everybody's you, nice. You English are rowdy. I love it, but you're rowdy. I think everyone's nice. Yeah, I mean... But the, the English are definitely the rowdiest bunch. Yeah, that's just my personality. I think alligators are nice. Of course you do. Everyone needs to be best friends. Shout out to uh, Daniel from Embrace the Suck 21. Also got his own channel, Aries in the Nation. He's been putting up some uh, posts because he's with his dad in Florida right now on the other oh, side yeah. of the state, but yeah, which is very oh, far from us. But uh, yeah, he put up a bit. He was walking down the street. There was an alligator on the side of the road. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's every day. Yeah. That's every single day. Just make sure you don't have a small animal with you. Yeah. Or, or get too close to it. I no mean, he was it. literally like 10 feet away. He walked past it like 10 feet away. They can run. Listen, they are fast on land. Yeah. They're even faster in the water, but they can run. They can get you. So, Daniel, be careful. Yeah, be careful. I want to start hunting, uh, killing those things and eating them because I finally started eating gator and I love well, it. Well, then you need to go to a... Um, I keep telling you I want to do an airboat ride in Miami. Yeah, in the mm -hmm. Everglades. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. fun. Yeah, that would be I fun. haven't done one since I was a kid. Let's check out whales. I have to make room. I don't have to go, right, I've got to chuck some out. I've got to chuck some out now. He's simplistically set you know. Of course but... you do. Unless you're Stephen Hawking, who's got it all on hard drive, you can't just go, oh, where's that thing? Oh, man. Where's that oh. thing that, that I want to remember? You might go, oh, I remember knowing something like that before when you were talking about bananas. Now, I had that fact about if you eat more than six, it can kill you. No, that's definitely not, that's not a fact. It is a that, fact. No, it's not a Potassium fact. Potassium levels are dangerously high if you have six bananas. Now, I didn't, I, when I walked in here today, I wasn't going, let's tell Ricky about the banana fact. I went in that place you're having makeup on, I saw a bowl of bananas, I said, there's six bananas there, you know why there's only six? Seven would be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> this still happened. What fact squeezed out of your brain to accommodate the banana information? I don't know, because I forgot it. Perfect. 
Good answer. That was a good answer, Carl. I mean, they say travel broadens the mind, but I don't know if it does. Buggers it up. I'm knackered. Well, we're, we'll find out. I'm excited for season two because that's People the one that I haven't seen. Yeah, I love watching things you haven't seen with you. Yeah. Like it was, it was, it was nice to have a good refresher course on season yeah. one, though, because a lot of the stuff I forgot. But um, I remembered a lot of the funny bits from this yeah. last episode. But yeah, it's uh, even even like even though it's funny, it's it's also very interesting and. To it's see somebody, it's, it's, I actually think it's a genius concept to put somebody there who doesn't want to be there. I do too. You know, because, and then there's the rare times where he actually does like something and I'm, I feel very happy for him. Yeah. So, but yeah, Ricky and Steve, I think they do kind of bully him a little bit, but it's like. Yeah, they do a little bit. But you, you can tell they love him. But I feel like sometimes really close friends and. Even couples, you bully each other. Yeah. I bully him. She bullies me. I bully her sometimes. Yeah, it's fun. Builds character. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes out of a place of love. Yeah, and if you're not happy looking a knob in the face, there's something wrong. Yeah. Look that knob Remember in the face. That. Give it a wink. Give it a wink. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed the uh, season one reactions for an idiot abroad uh eventually we'll get around to season two yeah i don't know when that'll be i but... think we might finish some other shows first yeah but we'll see um i'm actually getting ready to start a couple new ones new ones tomorrow Ooh. but you're gonna you're gonna be busy tomorrow yeah. so i'll yeah, let you start, know i'll let you know how they are because i know Immediately, like when if I'm I'll like, like it? I'll, I'll know immediately and be like, oh, Callie's got to watch this. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. So. Thanks for knowing me. No problem, baby girl. All right, you guys. Y'all have a great day. Stay safe and we'll see you soon, all right? Bye, guys. Take it easy.